Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and we are currently on the surface of our sun. As you can probably tell from the title of this video, we're going to be talking about the relationship between masses of different stars, including our sun, and their lifetime. So let's discuss a little bit of math in this video and welcome to What The Math. So by now you should probably be aware that not all stars, or I guess none of the stars, have the same uh, lifetime. As a matter of fact, the more massive the star, the less time it has in its life. So supermassive stars actually live very, very, very little in stellar terms. But uh, when it comes to establishing this relationship, it's not as easy as you can think. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship, meaning that something that's double the mass doesn't actually have double or half the lifetime. Uh, and vice versa, if you have a red dwarf that has very little mass, its lifetime is not as easily established. But through various mathematical calculations, scientists have actually established this relationship. And today I'm going to briefly talk about it by using a few examples. So for now, let's actually leave our solar system and let's uh, go to a star that's a little bit more massive than our sun. Let's start with a star by the name of Vega. It's a relatively uh, famous star. It's also very, very bright in our night sky. But as you can see, its mass is about, well, close to about three masses of our sun. Uh, this beautiful star is vi easily visible in the night sky. And uh, in this particular simulation, it also has some planets here. As a matter of fact, some of them are very interesting. This one has relatively interesting um, Earth-like temperatures but it's unfortunately a Neptune-like uh, ice giant, or I guess in this case, a warm ice giant. But it might have some moons here that we could actually visit that might actually have uh, Earth-like conditions. So both of these are actually um, micro terras, basically micro-Earths without any atmosphere. This is what they look like. But this is not where we're here. We're here to discuss the star. So there's Vega in the distance. How long will it actually live compared to our own sun? In other words, compared to our sun that has a total lifespan of about nine and a half billion years, how long will actually this star live? Assuming that we know its uh, mass and I guess in this sense, its luminosity as well. So this is where uh, we actually look at various studies and specifically one study by, by a French astronomer, uh, Lionel C.S. I hope I pronounced this correctly, who studied various isochrones in various stars and basically uh, used metallicity of stars to establish a relationship between the mass of a star and its luminosity. Now this is from Wikipedia, but it's also from um, a link I'm publishing or posting it in the uh, description below. It's from a, a educational uh, website and you can check it out by yourself to see the math behind it. But the idea here is that um, there is a very, very strong relationship th between the mass and the luminosity. And for stars whose mass is over 1.3 solar masses, the luminosity starts increasing exponentially. They become more and more bright. But also, that also implies that they start using up more energy and start using up more mass to produce that energy. And thus, their life will decrease exponentially as well. And all of this is based on the fact that all stars use fusion to produce energy. And in the beginning, they just use hydrogen molecules that combine to create uh, less stable helium molecules that then create helium-4 that releases a tremendous amount of energy and some protons and some neutrons um, and also some neutrinos and a lot of other stuff. But basically, this is the idea of how stars produce energy. And the more mass of the star, the more or more quickly it does this. And it just so happens that this relationship can be described as, as simply this. 1 divided by the mass of that star to the power of 2.5. Now, this gives you a relationship um, in comparison to our own sun, but we can actually easily calculate this for Vega. Let's just divide um, all of this using Google Calculator. And here what you'll get is uh, a value of 0 0.069. Now, this is in relation or compared to our own sun. So we actually have to now multiply this by the total lifetime of our own sun. And just for the simplicity's sakes, we're going to use 10 billion uh, years here. So we need to multiply this by 10 
billion years uh, to get an approximate age, total age of Vega uh, at his death. So basically here the value is around 700 million years. In other words, this beautiful star that you see in the back there will only live for a total of 700 million years. And if we know its total age right now, we can estimate how long it has left um, in its uh, lifetime. So um, if you actually go on Wikipedia and look up Vega and then look under the age, you'll see that it's currently around 455 million years, million years old that is. If its total lifespan is 700 million years, it means that it only has about 200 million years left in it. In other words, after 200 million years, this beautiful star will most likely, uh, well, it's actually probably going to turn into a very, very bright planetary nebula and then turn into a white dwarf. It's not going to go supernova because its mass is just not uh, large enough. Now, this formula works pretty well for uh, relatively small stars, but it does kind of become more problematic for more massive stars. So let's just take a look at Rigel, for example, and I'll show you what I mean by this. Rigel is one of the brightest stars in our night sky. It is right there, and it's also a very, very, very massive triple star. The central component here is a star called Rigel A. Um, the, the actual parameters in Space Engine are maybe not as accurate, but we're gonna go with them anyway. The mass here is 21 masses of the Sun. Uh, the luminosity here is approximately 52,000 times brighter than our Sun. So let's plug this in. We're gonna take the number 21 and plug it into the formula we've used before. So here, let's just change this. And once again, multiply this by 10 billion and see what we get. We get the value of about um, four, well, I guess five, close to five million years. So the total lifespan of Rigel should be about five million years. But if you go on Wikipedia, and if you type Rigel, you'll discover that it just so happens that we think that its current age is close to about eight million years. So there's a bit of a discrepancy. And that's because for the largest stars, there's a lot of other stuff that's happening uh, that makes their calculation for their age and for their luminosity and mass a little bit more complex. And there could be a lot of explanations for why this is happening, including uh, the fact that maybe the star changed over time, maybe it swallowed another star because this was a triple star system, or maybe just maybe uh, this just doesn't work for larger stars. But it does work overall for anything that's closer to the um, sun and its mass, and also for figuring out the age of some other stars and their maximum lifespan. Uh, this actually works pretty good. So, like, for example, let's just say we want to discover the closest star to us, Proxima Centauri, will live. And this is a red dwarf, so we expect it to live very, very long. Well, let's do the calculations. So it's about 0.12 masses of our sun. So here we're going to replace all of this by 0.12 to get this value. And once you multiply this by 10 billion, and so you basically are going to get this number, which is approximately 2 trillion years. In other words, uh, this beautiful star of Proxima Centauri with its beautiful planet Proxima V is still going to be kicking it around um, even after our own sun has become a white dwarf and has even started to decrease in temperature and slowly turn into a black dwarf. So this system has a very, very, very long lifespan, which is why scientists are so interested in studying red dwarfs in a little bit more detail, because this presents us with a possibility for a new home uh, sometime in the future, if we really kind of screw, screw it up in our own solar system. But anyway, so that's kind of how you establish and calculate approximate age, uh, not age, but the lifespan of various stars. And that's how you can actually find out how long certain stars will live. And so essentially using this formula right here uh, that you can find in the link in, uh, that I posted in the description, and then multiplying this by 10 billion, which is approximate age of our own sun, you'll get the approximate age of various stars uh, that you might uh, be able to discover on Wikipedia and or in Space Engine. So this is kind of how you calculate how long the stars will live. And um, just to get, kind of give you a perspective here, if a sun is one mass of the sun, and if a star is about double the mass of our sun, on average it will live approximately 316 uh, times shorter than our sun. 
So the actual relationship is exponential and the lifespan of stars decreases dramatically with the increase in mass. And so just to finish this video, just to give you perspective of how all of this works, if a star is about 10 times more massive than our own sun, it will actually live about 316 times uh, shorter. So the relationship is exponential and it increases quite dramatically with the mass of the star. And some of the most massive stars, like for example, uh, the most massive star we discovered, which is R136, which I think I can point at using Space Engine, which is actually in the uh, neighboring galaxy, a large Magellan cloud. This star is ridiculously massive. It's close to about 265 masses of our sun. And as you can imagine, it will live very, very, very little. You can do the math behind it and see if you can figure it out. And if you did, uh, post it in the comments below. Other than that, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And in the second part, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, how much mass various stars lose over time as well. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you did, subscribe and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.